I want you to want me. one.
tick tock, tick tock. Break down. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I had that mic on mute. What? Yeah, so just wanted to talk to you guys about a few things before we begin. Um, there's a lot of people that are finally catching up on those missing assignments. First off, actually, good morning. I didn't even know if I said that. Yeah, good morning, Ricardo. Good morning, Phoebe. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Abigail. Good morning, Gerard Butler. Good morning, Dylan. I sent you an email. I hope you checked it out. Good morning, Sydney. Um, I'm looking forward to this lesson with y'all. It may or may not involve a very delicious dessert um, as part of a little acronym I use to kind of help you guys with remembering it. Um, make sure you guys are on top of that stuff, okay? It, it's a lot harder to play catch up. And uh, I want to have a mandatory meeting on Friday, so I want everyone, not at once necessarily, but I need to check in with everyone so that I make sure you're doing okay to actually hear your voice and to see if there's anything I can do to help you, okay? So make sure you have that penciled in. Anytime on Friday between our office hours, nine to noon, okay? You just have to come in once, talk to me for a little bit, let me know if there's anything you need, but I mostly just wanna check in on you, okay? Good morning, Alexa. So make sure you guys are ready for that, okay? And since you're watching this video, I want you guys to not only hit the like button, but I want you guys to also leave a comment. And you guys are going to leave a comment that says what your favorite food is, right? For me, my all-time favorite food is eggplant parmesan. I know that might sound weird for some people, but the first time I had it was with my grandma, and it just, you know, it just, oh, the best thing ever. So good, right? Christian, good morning. Nick, good morning. Alexa, I think I said good morning. <laughs> YouTuber, right? No, but seriously, just do it just because so then I know, right, you guys are active, you guys are engaged. I know you guys are great kids, right, but I, I, want, I just want to see those things. I don't make money off these things. You know, I have a, I don't have that kind of YouTube account. I'm not that cool anyways. So without further ado, no, not comment on here. This is a stream. You're going to comment on the actual video comments. Okay, and actually, I don't know if in a live video you can leave live comments. We'll figure that out as we go along. Good morning, Gianna. All right, let's begin. So these are the notes for day three. We're looking at two main concepts. We're looking at arc length, and we're looking at inscribed angles. A lot of times there is confusion because we've talked about measures of arcs, and then now we're talking about the length. The measure is in degrees. The length is an actual unit. So if we were to talk about how, um, how long it is going around part of a circle, the actual length of it, that's the arc length. Or you will sometimes see it listed as the length of the arc versus if I wanna know it's a measure, that's how many degrees it takes to go from one part of that arc to the other part. It's just the measure of it versus the length of it, which seems weird, right? Because don't we measure length, right? So just a little, you know, clarification there with our vocabulary, okay? Now we should hopefully know that the circumference is the distance around the circle. Which is just a fancy word for the perimeter, right? The perimeter of the circle is the circumference. The number pi, P-I, not P-I-E, is the ratio of the diameter of a circle to its circumference, or is it circumference to diameter? Basically the same thing. Eventually you get pi, it's pretty cool. No matter what size of the circle, you take a big circle, a small circle, you take those ratios, it's always gonna come out to pi. Now we did have the formula last unit when we wanted to look at the circumference, when we were looking at our surface area and volumes, we needed both of those. 
So the one formula you'll see, the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. You will also see it listed as pi times the diameter. Right, so whichever one you're given, that's the one you're going to use. If you're going to find the circumference, it doesn't hurt to use 2 pi r, it doesn't hurt to use pi times the diameter, whatever works for you. Right? So our first example here, we have a car that has a turning radius of 16.1 feet. The distance between your two front tires of this car is 4.7 feet. We want to figure out how much further does the outer tire travel in a full circle than the inner tire. So we're going to label our figure with what we know. A turning radius is always measured from the center of the turn to the inside tire. So this turning radius of 16.1 feet goes here. Let me make that a little clearer. There we go. Okay. Now the distance between our tires, right, is 4.7 feet. Now, what I want to do is to figure out how much further one tire goes than the other, I should probably figure out how far the tire travels in one rotation. Well, we just looked at that. That's our circumference. We have two different circumferences to look at. We have the outer and the inner. So I'm going to use a little notation for that. I'm going to call that CI and then CO circumference of the inner right our circumference is 2 pi r because we were given the radius not the diameter the yellow highlighted circle right that radius is 16.1 2 pi times 16.1 now for the sake of this one right if we're going to be honest here you're never going to tell someone flat out oh your tire goes you know, 26 pi units in a circle. That means nothing to you, right? So in this case, we're totally fine using our calculators and getting our pi value from there. You could use 3.14, but it's better that we're consistent and use our pi function on our calculator, right? So I'm gonna do two times 16.1 times my pi button, which is right there. So for the inner circumference, I am getting, and you can check this, because let's be honest, I make mistakes sometimes too, 101.159 blah blah blah. I'm not going to round until the very end, right? I, I want to try to make that a good habit of mine. Now we're going to calculate this, the uh, circumference of the inside, of sorry, of the outside, the outer circle. Again, 2 pi r but my radius is not explicitly given to me. We have to use the fact that the 16.1 and the 4.7 make the radius for the outer tire. So for that outer tire, right, I'm gonna take the 16.1 plus 4.7 to get 20.8. That's going to be my radius for the outer tire. What did it say that was 20.8? Now again, just go straight to your calculator, type it in, and this is where you're gonna wanna keep your answers from your calculator, and if you, if you have trouble losing it, I can show you how you can keep them, but for the most part, you're just subtracting your answers. So, let's see here, two pi times 20.8, right? I get 130.690, blah, blah, blah. So now what we're going to do to figure out how much further one tire goes than the other, we have to take the difference between those two. We're going to take the outer circumference and subtract from it the inner circumference. Right? So this is where you're going to want to keep both answers. If for some reason, you know, you didn't write down enough decimals or your calculator's not cool enough to do that, what you can do is you can actually input both functions and separate them with parentheses. 
So what I'm going to try to do is show you guys on my calculator. 2 pi times 16.1 in parentheses. Okay, nope, I need to do the bigger one. I need to do the, let me retry this, 2 pi times 20.8. There we go. Minus, okay, for some reason it hit an extra multiplication. Good job, calculator. There we go. <laughs> Got good work. Okay. So let me show you guys what I typed in. And again, I apologize if it's a little hard to see because of any glare. I blame my window being there for that. Thank you, notifications. I should have turned them off, but oh well. Yeah, so you'll see I grouped them both. And then when I hit enter, boom, I get 29.53 plus some decimals. It doesn't tell us where to round to, Mr. T. How do we know where to round to? Well, because this is a unit length, we can round it to the nearest tenth. So we're going to go ahead and say 29.5, because again, the 5 looks back at the 3, doesn't round. And we do have units for this one. These are feet. Sick. All right. Just a little bit of applied work with our circumferences. We're going to use that in a bit to help us with arc length. So first off, the measure of an arc is in degrees, while the length is a fraction of the circumference. Now, how does this work? Well, you want to think of this as a proportion. Every angle that's inside of the circle is part of the total angle inside. So if I have 60 degrees, right, I know that 60 degrees represents a certain part of the 360. And in a similar manner, the arc length represents a portion of the circumference. With that in mind, we can make a formula to help us get the arc, the arc length. So 60 degrees represents 60 out of the 360, which reduces to one sixth of the circle. So its arc length is one-sixth the circumference. Let me zoom in on that. Boom. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys kind of a choice here. We're going to simplify one of the formulas. I promise you it'll make your life easier. Okay. Um, here we go. So first off, arc length you can think of as capital L, the length of AB. There should have been a little arc symbol over here. If I want to know how long this is, I need to first know the angle that's inside. So I'm going to call that angle x degrees. Now in other math classes, you're going to be seeing this symbol theta. Theta is a Greek symbol that's usually represented for angles. Any math class here and you see theta, you're going to know that has to do with an angle. So just a little tidbit for y'all. Okay, so the length of AB, or arc length, is going to be equal to, it's the proportion of your arc measure, which is x over 360, times the circumference. And the circumference, we said we had two formulas. We had 2 pi r, or we had pi times the diameter. I'm going to go with the radius on this one, since the radius most of the time is given, or it's easier to solve for. So we're going to say times 2 pi r. Now, you could just take the x over 360, simplify that fraction first, multiply it with the 2 pi r. I'm going to simplify this expression. Okay, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to look at the 2 and the 360. Those are going to simplify. So that's going to get us 180 on the bottom. The 2 has gone up top. So I'm going to have x times the radius times pi divided by 180. This is simplified. So what this allows us to do is then you just have to worry about 
now simplifying the x times r and seeing if that reduces with the 180. Or if you notice they simplify right away, you go for that first. Okay? So let's go ahead and show you guys a couple of examples. There are a couple of these on the homework as well. And I promise you that the best way to make sure you don't confuse yourself is really understanding what a length is versus a measure. Okay? So here we go. We're going to find the length of each arc. So this is XY. When it's two letters, I want the shortest distance between those two. So I want to figure out how long that is. So my arc length is going to equal, well, I need to know what angle this arc goes to. Well, that box tells me it's 90 degrees. So I know that my angle is 90 degrees. And I need to know its radius. Well, this 16 right here is the diameter. All I'm going to do is take half of it to get my radius. At this point, we're just going to plug it in and simplify our expression. When it says leave your answers in terms of pi, that means we're not punching it in our calculators. We're going to keep the pi at the end of our answer, just like we did with our volumes and surface area. So here we go x times r times pi, so x is 90, r is 8, and then we have pi divided by 180. Now I see the 90 and I see the 180, and what I like about those two is they are going to reduce really nicely. 90 goes into 180 twice, 90 goes into itself once. So this becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. So now I have 8 pi over 2, which we know should reduce further, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 4 pi. And then, of course, don't forget your units, inches. This is not inches squared. This is not inches cubed because that's not area or volume. This is a length, right? So the length is going to be in the one-dimensional unit. So just inches. All right, this one we're going to try it together. Again, just to make sure you guys have the right idea. Here I have three letters, X, P, N. So I start at X, I go to P, and I end at Y. So I want that entire arc length. To get that arc length, I need to know the measure of its angle. I need to know how many degrees it takes up. Well, I know this 120 goes from here to here. I would like to figure out what the rest of it is. Well, your beautiful smart brains should hopefully remember that a full circle is 360. So we're going to take 360 and subtract away from it the 120. So now we have 240. So now we know that x is 240. We should also try to find the radius. Oh, hey, look, it's nicely given to us, the 15. So my radius doesn't need any extra work. It's just right there. Now we plug it in and get to work. My arc length is equal to, let's see here, we said that it was the angle, 240 degrees, times my radius, which is 15 times the pi over 180. Now, I'm looking at the bigger numbers because I like to simplify those first. I see that this 240 and 180, first off, they both end in a zero, right? So that means they're divisible by 10. So I'm left with 24 and 18. I know that 6 goes into 18 and 24. 6, 12, 18, 24. Right, so then that reduces this to a 4. That reduces this to a 3. I also know that 3 goes into 15. It goes into it 5 times. So all I'm left with is the 4 and the 5 pi up top. The 1 down below, remember, we never really write a fraction with the 1 down below. So my arc length is now going to simplify to 20 pi. And then, of course, we have centimeters. And there you go. There's your arc length. 
are there any questions that you may have for me? I'm going to take a little water break because I'm a little thirsty. I also timed it. It's a 10 second delay. So that's why I'm waiting very patiently to see if there are any questions. That's pretty good. Thank you, Carly. Also, Carly, I hope you got my email because I want to make sure that you are on top of your stuff. <laughs> you like this more than the last few. I don't know. I, I like all of it, but that's just me. You know, I'm a little biased. Okay, we're going to move on. It doesn't seem like there are any questions. So this right up here might sound a little confusing, mm -hmm. so I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. I have, can we just multiply the top and divide? Yes, you are more than welcome to multiply the top and divide. Um, just make sure that you're, um, make sure that you're using a good efficient way of reducing them. I'm not gonna tell you how to run your life, right? But make sure that you don't put yourself in a position where it's like, oh, you rely too much on the calculator. Because if it, this case, these two examples simplified nicely I believe one of the homework problems is not going to simplify as nice. You'll get a decimal, so you want to try to make sure you know how to reduce them both correctly. Um, explain that last bit again. I'm going to assume you're talking about this example here, Gerardo. All I did was I figured out the different ways that I know how to reduce a number. When you notice those patterns and you use them to help you simplify it, it makes your life easier instead of multiplying 240 times 15, then dividing by 180. It'll work out here nicely. You can totally do that. Okay, no issue there. All right, so here we go. So for this part here, I have two different circles. They both have 60 degrees in the middle. So the statements that I have above are really saying this. I could have a circle. I could have two different circles that have this 60 degree measure. They have the measure of 60 degrees. But because this first circle is smaller, this arc length is actually shorter than this arc length. If you compare that in the same way as maybe uh, like, a, like a, a soda can. If you take a soda can and you look at the top and you say, oh, here's 60 degrees. Well, that length around the circle it's definitely a lot smaller than if I went to the track field and measured out 60 degrees at the, at the round part. That length is clearly a lot bigger than the length around the can, right? Now, we can do kind of the opposite. We could take two circles, and I know it's not going to be exact for here, but I could say, hey, I want to take this length here. I could say that this length is 15 units long don't know what those units are. We could pretend they're feet, inches, whatever. Those 15 units would take this much of the circle. It's a significantly larger part. So I could have two circles with the same arc length, but then they would not have the same measure, the same central angle, right? Because this angle is significantly smaller than this angle here. This angle is way bigger than that one, right? That's really all this is saying here. It's possible for two arcs of circles to have the same measure but different lengths. And again, conversely, we can say it's possible for two arcs to have the same length but then have different measures. That's really all it is. It's just more facts for you. It's just making sure you understand that circles of different sizes can have one or the other conversely. The only way you can have exactly the same arc length and arc measure is if the arcs are actually congruent. They have to be in the same circle in order for them to be congruent. So we call those congruent arcs. Congruent arcs have the same measure and the same length. 
in order for that to happen, they must be in the same circle. Now we're going to talk about another type of angle. We've kind of talked about it before, but not involved with circles. These are called inscribed angles. So a scribe, if you remember your Latin prefixes, scribe means to write. If you know Spanish or any other Latin-based language, escribir, escrit, right? Written. And then inscribe having to do with where it's written. So an inscribed an angle is angle formed from two chords. Sometimes you can have tangents, sometimes you can have secants, but primarily they're two chords that are inside of your circle. Now, these intersect on the one side. So here's how it looks. The inscribed angle, I'm going to show you these two chords here, are intersecting at this point C. Okay, so point C is where the inscribed angle is formed. When your angle is on the circle, right, we've had different angles that were in the center of our circle. The center right would be represented with a dot. That's not the case here. Now the angle is on the edge of the circle. It is on the actual solid part of the circle. Okay? So an inscribed angle, this is where I tell you guys this is like my ice cream theorem. Yes, I do say ice cream, right? That yellow is the cone. And I'm going to erase the rest of this part because here is my ice cream. Okay? I know my imagination is a little stretching, but yes, this is an ice cream cone. All right, you turn your paper sideways, boom. What makes it special is that it has a nice relationship. If I know the measure of this arc, I'm going to say that this arc is 60 degrees. I can immediately find the inscribed angle, and I'm going to give you guys a little story, right? It's been really warm this week, right? Like some of your guys' temperatures have been hitting over 100, right? I mean, you could say pizza, but I like ice cream more for this example. You'll see why, Abby. So, you know, it's been really warm lately. And so you'd want some ice cream. Well, you got to eat the ice cream quickly because if you don't, then it melts. And so as it's melting, it goes down to the center of the cone, goes to the bottom of your cone. Well, that doesn't make you as happy. If anything, you're half as happy. So what we would say here is that angle C is now going to be half of that arc. So now it's half of 60. That's all it is. You just take half of the arc measure, and boom, there's your inscribed angle. We can go backwards. If we know the inscribed angle, we can get the arc measure. There's kind of two ways to it for you to look at. Okay, the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. And the reason we say intercepted is because it's where it traps and touches the circle. Okay, not too bad. And I promise you guys, it's just a matter of making sure you keep track of your stuff. If you're the kind of person that likes to use colored pencils, highlighters, colored markers, colored pens, right? This is one where I love to do it because it helps me keep track of the different intercepted arcs, basically our ice creams and our pizzas in Abby's case. I mean, let's be honest, pizza is always good. Okay? We're going to find the values of A and B. So I have to first identify what I do know, and then I have to work from there. So right here, I'm going to start off with marking angle A. And by angle A, I mean the arc for A. A represents this arc right here. Now, what I want to do is identify the arc I have and then figure out what two chords make and meet that arc. So that would be this arc right here, or sorry, this chord here, and this chord here. They're both pointing at the 60. 
So first off, I want to figure out, is the ice cream melting to the cone, or am I trying to get the ice cream out of the cone? Right? Since it's in the center of the cone, we want to bring it out. So what's going to happen here is you're going to take angle A and say that it's double the inscribed angle. So that's our 60 degrees. So it comes out to 120 degrees. So that's really your first type of flavor. We can call this, you know, chocolate. Now we're going to have some vanilla. Actually, you know what? I take that back. We're going to have some strawberry. Because now I want to solve for angle B. Well, angle B is formed by this chord and this chord. Well, now what I'm going to do is figure out what arc is in between those two chords. So that's going to be here all the way down to here. Well, I just found A. A, we said, was 120 degrees. And then we have this little extra segment here of 30 degrees. So angle B, remember B is at the bottom of the cone, so that means we want to work our way down. Well, the total arc up there is the 120 and the 30 degrees. So I'm going to take half of those two combined together. Right, so I'm going to have one half of 150. So that's going to get me 75. Don't forget your degree sign. Okay. And that's really all we're doing. Right, now it says here, find the measure of PQR. So I'm going to find PQR. That is this one here. Let's use, you know what, let's use the galaxy pen. P, Q, R. We want to use PQR, get that. Now they're telling us find this if we know something else. So let's figure out what else we need to know. The measure of RS. Oh, well look at that, RS is right here. 60 degrees. So again, using our ice cream theorem, and I'm going to use a thicker galaxy pen to kind of illustrate the outside part. Right, I'm looking at here, going all the way around, all the way, all the way, all the way there. Right, so that involved me adding and going through three different arcs. It involved me going through 120, 30, and 60. So if I add those three together and then take half of it, I will find the measure of that angle. The measure of angle PQR equals half, right, because we're going from the outside in, half of 120 plus 30 plus 60. Right, I know 60 plus 120 is 180, plus 30 is 210. And so we get 105 degrees. I'm going to leave that up so that you guys can take a look. Give me any questions that you guys have so I can answer them. And remember, I'm here to help you all. We've been at this for about 35 minutes. Not too bad. We still have a couple of little parts, but really, this is the last bit of it. So the rest of the stuff is just more extension on it. Any questions, beautiful children? Do not be shy to ask. Also, it was funny because I had 34 people viewing, and now it's less than that. It's 26 people. Maybe they got super poor for me. I don't blame them. Oh, the other 60 was given to us. That's a great question, Christian. That was given to us here. Any other questions? I'm going to take that as a no, and we're going to go ahead and move on. 
Hopefully you guys are good with drawing. Key phrase, hopefully. <laughs> no, you're not dumb. It happens. Okay? So what we're going to have here is these corollaries to these inscribed angles. Corollaries just mean that because we know the first thing is true, we have other things that happen because of that. So the first one is talking about what happens when you have two inscribed angles that share the same arc. If they intercept the same arc, those inscribed angles are congruent. And I'm going to show you guys a good example of that one. Okay? So right here, I'm going to make one inscribed angle from here, going here to here. Now I'm going to have a completely different inscribed angle right down here. It goes here to here. Right? Those are completely different spots. However, they both share this right here. Remember that the formula is to go from the ice cream to the cone, is you would take half of it. Well, if you're taking half of the same number, you should hopefully get the same answer. So what's going to happen is, no matter what, if your arcs, if your, uh, sorry, your inscribed angles share the same arc, they're going to be congruent, no matter what. That's a nice little thing. So you find something like that in your assignments, boom, you just do it. You don't, there's not really a whole lot of work to show there. Okay? Now we're going to talk about what happens with a semicircle, right? So an angle that's inscribed inside a semicircle, right? So we say that that's half a circle. is a right angle. And I'm going to explain that one here. Okay, so let me keep that up. So if we put the center of our circle there, okay, that was kind of horrible. Let's try that again, Mr. T. And I draw a diameter. Nope, that is not a diameter. Boom. So here's half a circle. If I place an inscribed angle here, what's going to happen is that this angle here, and again, it's going to be a little hard to kind of visualize it, but this angle here will always be a right angle. And the reason that is, is if you think about it, a diameter cuts the circle in half. Well, half a circle is 180 degrees. Well, what's half of 180? Well, that's going to get you 90. So it doesn't matter where that angle is. I could have moved that angle over here. I'll do it in a light green. I could have done this angle here. That's also going to be 90 degrees. Nope, I can draw. I promise, Mr. T. That's also 90 degrees. No matter where you put that inscribed angle, if it's inside half of the circle and it touches those diameter, the ends of the diameter, it's always going to be 90. Okay, again, as long as you recognize that there's not a whole lot of work to show there last one the opposite angles of a quadrilateral that are inscribed in a circle are supplementary that's a word we haven't heard in a while supplementary there we go I can spell so again supplementary Right, that means that it adds to 180. So here's how that's going to look. I'm going to draw my quadrilateral in there. And it doesn't matter where the four corners are. I could put them in such weird, obscure spots. They could look like a trapezoid. They could look like, you know, whatever. This, this just looks weird. I'm going to put some angles inside of here. I'm going to say angle A, B, C, and D. The opposite angles, the ones that are directly across from each other. So angles D and B are supplementary. They add up to 180. I could say the same thing for A and C. Those two will add up to 180. This only happens when the quadrilateral is inside the circle. Okay, so I'm going to write those over here. 
A plus C equals 180, B plus D. Okay. So a lot of the rest of this just involves us kind of recognizing this, knowing how to use it, and going from there. Okay. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to give that a second for you guys to copy down because I'm sure some of you guys are doing that. Can't wait to see what your guys' favorite foods are. That way I know you guys have been watching. Right? I mean, it also gives me good ideas for what to cook and make at home. I do love to cook very delicious food. Okay, here we go. We're going to find the measure of our numbered angles. Now, I know it's not explicitly given to you. I'm going to tell you guys right now that this line is your diameter. There should have been a point right here to indicate that. But I'm telling you that so you know that. So I'm going to look at angle 1. And coincidentally, I was going to use yellow. So here's angle 1. And it meets with the 70. So I'm going from the ice cream to the cone. So I'm going to take half of 70. I'm going to do the same thing with angle 2. I've got this orange one here. I'm going to put the orange next to the yellow. Boom. Again, same idea. I'm going from the 40, from the ice cream to the cone. So angle 2 is going to be half of 40. Now angle 3, if you remember, angle 3 is an inscribed angle that touches our diameter. So without doing any work at all, I can say that angle three is 90 degrees. No work needed. Number four, however, the it's not really an angle, right? It's part of the arc. Well, if you remember what I told you all, that this arc plus this other arc here, and let me see if I can get pink to help me. These two arcs have to add up to 180. So I'm going to write myself a little equation. Angle 4 plus 70 degrees equals 180. Right? So I think you guys know how to do those calculations. Okay? So I'm going to leave that to you because I want to move on to some more examples. Right here, letter B. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing now. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think that 70 degrees is a red herring. If you don't know what that idiom means, it means it's a misleading piece of information. Because take a look here. 38 degrees goes from here to here. The angle 1 goes from here to here. So those two inscribed angles share this arc without even finding the measure of that arc I can find the measure of angle 1 since the two inscribed angles share the same arc angle 1 is just going to be 38 degrees yay right that goes with our first corollary okay so that's how I know 38 degrees is the measure of angle 1 that's 70 degrees didn't need it. Okay, let's move on because now we have this beautiful quadrilateral. We're going to find the measure of each numbered angle. Now, while it is tempting to maybe say, okay, that that dotted line might cut angle four and two and a half, we don't want to assume that, okay? That is the worst thing you could do. Plus, it makes this a little messy. Instead, we're going to dive back into what we know and love to eat, ice cream. If you're lactose intolerant, sucks for you. But I guess some people still eat it anyways, because let's be honest, ice cream is delicious. So here we go. How was it 38? Because it's exactly the same measure. It's part of our first corollary. Those two. No, you're good. No worries. No worries. No worries. Okay. So back to this. So angle four corresponds with 60 degrees and 80 degrees. And again, this one might get a little messy, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay? Um, 
let's see here. I know that we have the ice cream. We want to go from the ice cream to the cone. So angle four is going to equal one half of 60 plus 80. Right? Once I find angle four, that's going to help me find angle two because then I can just use, you know, the fact that those two opposite angles have to add up to 180. Yeah. So let's see here. 60 plus 80 is 140. Half of 40, half of 140 is 70. So this angle right here is 70 degrees. I know that angle four and angle two have to add up to 180. So then that would mean angle two is 110 degrees. You might be thinking to yourself, well, how do we get angle one and three if we don't know anything else? Great questions lead to great discoveries or great ideas or all the above or, you know, whatever fancies your boat. Um, I'm going to use the fact that this dotted line is my diameter and I'm going to say that this arc plus that arc have to add up to 180. Why do I care about that? Because then I can use that to solve for angle one. Do I even need to solve for angle one that way though? I might not need to and here's why. Because I have a diameter, and I'm gonna go backwards on that one, my apologies if any of you went on ahead. If this is my diameter and here's my inscribed angle, then that's automatically gonna make that 90 degrees. And we could say the same thing for angle three. I mean, you could have done it the way I would, come on, seriously, there we go. We could have done it the way I was about to do it before, you'd still get 90 degrees. There, there's, no, there's no issue there, all right? So, the very last thing, which again, isn't really anything new because you guys have technically already done it. It's still the ice cream theorem. It's just a weird ice cream. I like to call this the Disneyland ice cream because you know how they make all sorts of weird stuff. Have you tried, guys tried the gray stuff? It's delicious, all right? So the measure of an angle formed by a tangent line and a chord, it's the exact same thing as your inscribed angle. This is just, it just looks different. So again, it's the same formula. It's half the measure of the intercepted arc. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of, I mean, I don't wanna say there are two flavors. It's really the same flavor, it just looks different. On this one here, here's my ice cream and it fits inside of this awkward cone, right? Like why would you make the cone like that and then put the ice cream like that? Who knows? <laughs> yes, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, same idea, right? And then here I have this ice cream. Let's just say that this is pistachio. That's actually my dad's favorite flavor of ice cream. I like it too. It ain't bad. And here's my ice cream cone, right? So if I were to say that this angle here, this measure, right, is 210 degrees, right? I would say that X equals one half of 210. Right? Nothing crazy. It's, it's the exact same thing as what we've been doing before. The inscribed angle, again, remember, is always on the circle. So that's how we know what formula we're going to do. If it's on the circle, right, we're going to take half of it, half of the arc. If it's in the middle, it's exactly the same as the arc, like we've been doing before. Okay? So here we go. The last couple examples. I'm probably not going to mathematically compute them all. I'm just going to set them up for you so that you could figure out what to do from there. But we're basically going to be done. But for those of you that are like, I don't know what's going on. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Just follow along. Follow the crazy train. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I see this 35 degrees. I'm going to want to work my way with that because once you know the 35 degrees, you can basically figure out the rest of this. 
this is the ice cream cone. So when I bring it out, right, we're going to double it. So this arc right here is going to be 70 degrees. Where'd you get 70? Good question. I'm going to take 35 times 2, and that gets me 70 degrees here. Now you're going to notice that angle X is formed by this line here and this tangent line here. This is one of those really awkward ice cream cones. This is the Disneyland cone, right? So X is inside of that ice cream cone. The ice cream is at 70 degrees. So we can say that X equals 1 half of 70, which nicely enough gets us the 35 degrees. No biggie. Now I need to work my way around to solve for angle Y. There's something that we may not have noticed before, but since I know, and again I know because of the dot in the middle, that this is our diameter, that means that this angle right here must be 90 degrees. Okay, so here's 90 degrees. And I know that all three angles in a triangle are going to add up to 180. So I'm going to look for angle Y that way. So 35 plus 90 plus Y equals 180. We're going to use that to solve for angle Y. So let's see here, what is that? I believe that's going to be 55 degrees. So once I know that that's 55 degrees, I'm going to put it here. And then I look at angle Z and I say, wait a second, Z is an arc. That's my arc right there. That means that that's my ice cream. What cone does that belong to? Coincidentally, that belongs to Y. Do you see what I mean? Like when I was telling you guys that this gets a little messy? Yeah, story of my life. Hey. Okay. Um... So let's see here. Since Z is the ice cream, we want to take the cone and double it to get the ice cream. So I'm going to say that Z equals 2 times 55 degrees. So 110 degrees. Boom! I'm going to leave that up there for y'all. hope you all are having a great day so far. Today I'm actually going to be going to school so that I can clean up my room. No, I am not leaving West Ranch. Do not get all sad. They just want us to get our classroom summer ready. And I do need to clean off my desk. I need to put my stuff away so that when they come in and clean the rooms and get stuff ready for next year, it'll be easy to do so. I'm going to pick up any stuff I might need from the classroom to bring home. I should probably make a checklist of that before I forget. So yeah, good stuff. I do miss you all. Okay, two more examples and we're done. All right? RS and TU are the diameters of our circle A. RB is tangent to the circle A at point R. We want to find the measures of BRT. <laughs> do guitar segments during the stream. I'll do that a different time, not for the lesson, because I have to make sure I, you know, stick to the content. So BRT, we have BART, and we have TRS. So T-R-S. Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to call the first one X, and I'm going to call the second one Y. So X degrees right here, and then y degrees because I don't know what they are but we're gonna find them I have that 126 which is actually very uh, after the video after the video um what's it called why can't I math <laughs> um, that 126 is gonna help us in a couple of ways we can use our vertical angle theorem so I know I can put the 126 here since these angles are located in the middle, that means that their measures are going to be the same on the arc. So that's 126. Now, 
I'm going to use the fact that since we were told they were diameters, that this arc, this strawberry ice cream, plus the 126 have to add up to 180. So I could do 180 minus 126, right? And that would get me 54. So I can find x right now. x equals 1 half of 54 because we're going from the ice cream to the cone. Same thing with angle Y. I'm going from the 126 to there. Let's make that one blue. Um, blue da -ba -dee -da -ba -da. And we're going to find the value for Y. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and do the last one. This one, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, was kind of a messy one, but not really. You just have to remember the parts that you do know, the markings and everything. Angle W, I'm going to draw with yellow. Now, be careful, because angle W is not located on the edge of the circle. It's located directly in the middle of the circle, right? Dead center. So that means it's exactly the same measure as the 84. However, X is not located in the center. It's located on the edge of the circle. So that means this ice cream is about to melt and work its way down. So X is going to equal half of 84. So that's going to get us 42 degrees. Yay. Now, here's something to consider. We have two chords that are inside of our circle that are both congruent. Since they're both congruent, that means that their arcs must be the same measure. And we know that all of those parts around the circle have to add up to 360. Well, if that first arc is Y, that means this one's also Y. So I guess we could say Y plus Y, and we ask a lot of Ys. I don't know why I just put equals. Let's try that again. Plus 84 equals 360. Right, you're going to solve for Y. That's going to get you the arc measure on both the left and right side. And that'll help us solve for Z. And I think I'll stop it there because I want to leave you guys the chance to solve for Z. I will give you this though. Now, if you have any questions, please jump into the Zoom meeting that we're going to have after this. I believe a couple of you I've asked you to jump in or you've said you're going to jump in. I will be posting the link on Google Classroom within the next couple of minutes. So make sure you're checking it. Okay, we're done with our lesson. We've gone through this. We only have one more lesson for this unit. And then we will review for our test next week. On the calendar, there was a quiz scheduled. We're not going to have a quiz this week. I've decided that we need to give you guys a break so that you guys can catch up on stuff. However, I do want to post that quiz so that you guys have extra practice, okay? Because some of those question types, they will appear on your test. So I want you to be prepared. I don't want you guys to be blind and saying, Mr. T, I've never seen this. This was not in our homework. This was not in anything we've done. 